Hey guys, and down here is gonna be my chapter review to One Piece 974 Onward to Onigashima. Um, and I thought this chapter was pretty crazy, though I think my hype was taken away by some confusion with the ending. We'll get to that, but let's go through the chapter and um, discuss because there's quite a bit to get through in this one. Not that there was like a whole shit ton of stuff that went down, it was just, you know, spoilers and reveals. But, um, the first scene we have Denjiro and Hiyori. I was going to say Denjiro versus Hiyori. That would have been a completely different chapter. But Denjiro and Hiyori. Here we see uh, Hiyori as, as Komurasaki giving Kyoshiro, who she addresses as Ushimitsu, you know, the Ushimitsu Kozo, I think it was, Witching Hour Boy. Uh, and here she's just giving him her hard earned money, which he then goes and spreads out to the poor. And all this part really serves to do is to tell us that Hiyori wore bags of blood beneath her kimono. Uh, in the event of Denjiro having to kill her suddenly. Um, the next scene was, for me, I, I just refer to it as um, the trader, the, the story of the trader, which is where we see a, a short snippet of a few months ago for uh, Orochi and Kaido, with Orochi sitting himself in front of Kaido, well, not even sitting, shitting himself in front of Kaido, uh, due to the return of Kinemon, Kanjiro, Raizo, Kikunojo, uh, Momonosuke and Kaido is very skeptical but he, he also he says that he doesn't want the scabbards killed if they are alive he has questions for them and I think that's really the big part one of the big parts of this chapter which not 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 many people like um, in, in on reddit or even on youtube not many of them seem to have caught on to this fact which is Kaido is interested in the scabbards he wants to ask them a question that's a big thing Kaido doesn't want to kill someone he wants to keep them alive and ask them something something he doesn't know Otherwise, he wouldn't ask them. So what the hell would someone like Kaido want to know from the scabbards? Is it the location of Laugh Tale or Raftal? Is it details about the Void Sentry, even though they, they don't really know anything about it? Is it is it lo a lo location of something or knowledge about something? What is it that Kaido wants to know? That's going to be a... a ha it has to be more of a an important part to the story. It's not just a throwaway line. Anyway... Orochi tells us about this spy he has, how he was born into a theater family, but his parents were killed on stage because they were they were a part of the family responsible for, for daimyo killing. And it's safe to assume at this point of the chapter, you didn't need to read on to think that the spy was a Kurozumi. Uh, and with the whole theater backstory, I'm pretty sure everyone started suspecting the same guy at the same damn time. You know, there's only one guy out of the scabbards who looks like he's from a theater troupe and... Oddly enough, it happened to be him. So Orochi found this kid and gave him a role to play while he was traumatized and adrift in society. Um, and his role was become a Kozuki clan member to the fullest. He becomes a scabbard, uh, all while reporting information back to Orochi. They supply, supplied this kid with the devil fruit, which actually looked pretty cool. I've forgotten exactly. I think it was like this heart shaped. Let me go back and check, actually. Ah, oh, shit. I, I just finished the check. Okay, so yeah, I think it was like this heart shaped. Um, half whitish, half black devil fruit. Obviously, the color scheme I'm not too sure on, but it did look pretty cool. Um, so, they, 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 Orochi goes into talking about how the spy would give him double money every time he went to ask Odin for some. For, so, Odin would give him some money, and then this spy would come out with double that money and give it to Orochi uh, out of the safe. So, essentially, Orochi would get three, three times the amount he would ask for, right? Um, and he would also tell Orochi about every detail of every plan, which made him aware of Odin's uh, raid and things like that. And the key thing about this spy is that Orochi says here, he's like, this guy has been willing to die and was almost going to die while playing his role. And, you know, and he would have done so during the boiling of Odin. He would have died without a complaint. Uh, so much so that Orochi basically told the dude, yo, you, you ain't gotta die with them. The, the final act is over. You... You can stay alive once you've ratted these guys out and once you, once we've got them on, on locks. You don't need to kill yourself. So then we go for the traitor reveal. So we go to the next scene where Momonosuke is desperately trying to stop his retainers from going to their deaths. They leave anyway with Kiko Nojo, bringing up the fact that there must have been a leak again from someone in their midst. Uh, and there's a traitor, uh, you know, she, she basically, or oh, I've forgotten, shit, is she, Kiko Nojo is she or he? Kiko Nojo is a he. So the, he says there's a, there's a traitor amongst us and we're all going to hold hands with him and die. Is that, you know, is that really what, what we want to do? We want to find out who the traitor is. And Kinemon here shows once again one of the destructive aspects of, of the samurai and, and their pride. 
how he would rather not know at this point which of his boys, which of his friends has betrayed them for so many years. And I'm like, look, I get that you're 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 basically just looking death in the eye now and saying, you know what, for my honor, for my for my honor's sake, for my pride, I'm gonna go fight everyone I can, kill as many people as I can on my way towards killing Kaido, and if I die in the process, I'll die, but at least I'll die fighting. I get all that, but I think I would rather know at this point in time who the hell, which one of my boys has been betraying me for years upon years upon years, and I'm going to kick the shit out of him. I, I would want to know. So Kinemon here is just, you know, he has too much pride to to even consider that one of his own was the traitor. So with very little prompting, actually, Kanjiro's like, yeah, it was me. <laughs> so spoiler alert, anybody who hasn't read the chapter, but Kanjiro reveals himself to be the traitor going on a giant high raid about how stupid they all were for not suspecting someone sooner uh, or not bringing up the suspicion, which is very true. You know, he, he, he even goes uh, on to say something to Dogstone, but as soon as they were betrayed once, everyone should have been investigated, um, but they were they were too hasty, too proud to admit that one of their own, yet again, have betrayed betrayed them. Uh, like I said, Kanjiro makes mention of a couple things. He makes mention of Yasui's death having been in vain because even though Yasui changed the plan, Kanjiro was privy to that change in the plan so there was no change in well the change was made um, made clear uh, to Orochi so it didn't really do much to save them uh, he also talks about how Inuarashi should have suspected them due to Zo having been found which is impossible without a, a Viva card so in effect yeah Inuarashi Nekomamushi they should have been like yo how did, how did Jack get here the only guys that should have a Viva card are, are our guys um, the, the Kozuki clan the Scabbards only these guys should be able to really get to Zo. How did he get to Zo? Who's been providing him with a Viva card? Who's provided him with a location, which is always changing? He had to have used a Viva card. And, you know, there are a few characters in One Piece who deserve to actually die, die. Kanjiro is one of them. His reasoning is the exact same as Orochi's. He's a Kurozumi and he wants the exact revenge on all of Wano. That's his reasoning. However, he was given the honor of chilling with Odin and the Scabbards for the majority of that time, and he still betrayed the people who had come, to, uh, who had come to call him brother. So even though I get it, his parents were murdered in front of him uh, during the theater, much like Batman kind of thing. But that was afterwards, um, and he he never found it in his heart to. Well, it's not even to forgive anyone. He never found it in his heart to, or the he never had the intelligence to not blame the people who weren't responsible for it. But he blames everyone who he's kind of painted everyone with a with the same brush here. Like, oh, these group, this group of people who killed my parents, they're they're at fault. But so are the rest of Wano for doing similar things or for allowing it to happen. So for some reason, he's pissed off at Wano, even though really it was it was a group of people in his village, uh, essentially who would have been idiots and killed his parents. Anyway, three of Kaido's ships come out to clean up the samurai who are in this little dinghy boat. Uh, identifying Kanjiro as their own spy. Kinemon straight tries to kill Kanjiro here. He actually slices off his head only to realize that this was a drawing, a very well-drawn drawing by Kanjiro. He has been hiding his true abilities as a Devil Fruit user, so all of his drawings like um, Ryunosuke and all that, all those terrible drawings were actually him faking it. Kanjiro is an incredible artist. He, he drew himself and it looked like the real thing. Kanjiro's real body is over at shore, uh, holding on to Momonosuke, and I was like, where the hell is Shinobu? Like, Shinobu was legitimately just holding Momonosuke. Where the hell is she gone? I hope she kills Kanjiro. The one person, you know, who wasn't actually officially given the title of retainer, killing the one treacherous retainer, I think that would be kind of poetic. Um, but then we come to the next scene, which is, <laughs> it was basically Pirates of the Caribbean, so I'm going to call it Pirates of the Caribbean. But suddenly Kaido's ships come under fire from two different angles, while a submarine rises from the depths beneath the samurai. Uh, Kid, Luffy, and Law arrive on the scene super late, having apparently altered the plans along the way without notifying the scabbards. Uh, and I, I would love to see some sort of flashback, mini flashback of the of the next couple pages um, of the next chapter. I want to see. Please show me either Law and or X Drake uh, using their brains and realizing the fact that hey, the, the scabbards. You know that there's been a leak before. There has to be a trader within the scabbards. Let's do what we want to do without telling them, and we're not going to tell them because we're freaking pirates. We ain't give a shit. So Kid makes mention here of seeing ships and samurai at 
the other port just hanging out. And this is where I was like, this part of the chapter took away from me because I just didn't understand what the hell was people were talking about. So, like I said, Kid makes mention of seeing ships and samurai at the other port just chilling. What the hell is he talking about? Which which port are we are we? To- we're not talking about Tokage, right? That's that's where we're at right now. We're at the Salamander or the Lizard Port. So which port is he talking about? One of Kaido's men literally mentions having just taken out taken out a whole bunch of ships recently. So there were definitely ships at the port that they're currently at. Are the samurai and their ships at another port? Even though there were ships here that had just got destroyed, but there there aren't there are there are a severe lack of bodies if the samurai got murdered, which they don't seem to have been. So where were these guys while all of this drama was going down? Kid, Law, Luffy, and who's going to kill Kanjiro? That's the main question. So either way, the chapter ends with a cool as hell double page. Luffy telling Kaido's men that at sea, you fight with pirates. And I was like, oh shit, and not samurai. Luffy has a new overcoat that looks dope as hell. He's got like these upright Cantona looking uh, collars. Uh, and... I can't wait to see the pain that these three are going to unleash. This trio is going to unleash. We've we've sat through some major L's for our samurai boys. And it's time for them to release all of this pent-up rage. All of the oppression. The treachery. Feelings of being forsaken. Unable to protect their master. You know, kind of in that Ronin sense. It's time to share this with their friends from out of town. And kick the shit out of their common enemy. I really hope they do that. I'm so hyped for just that. I feel I, I just feel like the dialogue at the end of this chapter was super confusing, especially with what Kid said. I still have no idea what he was actually trying to say. Are the samurai and the, their ships at another port because they were tipped off by Kid and someone else, or by Law or X Drake or something like that? Were they, were they tipped off and they they weren't there? But then which ships were being destroyed at the port they're at now? Did they just have a few empty ships that they thought, yeah, let's just put these here just to make it look like we were there? Um, because there, like I said, there there aren't very many bodies there. I don't think there are any bodies of any samurai. So it's not like all the samurai have been killed unless they they were in the ships and drowned. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what Kid was saying. I'm not I'm not sure how to interpret it. But I did enjoy the chapter. And Kanjiro, the one thing that took away from that fact, the the fact that he was the traitor, was that everyone and their mother was theorizing that Kanjiro he's the traitor. And I was like, really? I I couldn't see. A scabbard being a traitor i was just like these guys have been through shit and I, w- I wanted to see one of the scabbards looking towards orochi in the last chapter saying oh shit help me out bro i, I don't want burn like this but the fact that the guy was committed to die kanjiro was committed to die as one of the kozuki clan you know he it made it difficult to to consider any any of the retainers treacherous um and kanjiro just happens to be that guy so whoever whoever did actually predict that whoever stuck to that idea congrats um props to you but that's pretty much the end of the chapter i enjoyed it let me know what you guys thought let me know what you guys thought of this review like comment subscribe all of that good stuff and i will see you guys hopefully within the next couple-ish days to re- re- reveal review my hero i think i've got ties in the backlog i've got one punch in the backlog so i got a whole bunch of videos to get to so i'll see you guys in a bit